welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Joan Wilson, who is Deputy the Director of the Radio Communication Bureau of the International Telecommunication Union, ITU. Joan, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Now, the World Radio Communication Conference is taking place in Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt from the 28th of October till the 22nd of November 2019. It extends over a period of four weeks. Why does it take so long and how many delegates are expected to attend? Well, first, we are expecting more than 3,000 delegates. And uh, why does it take so long? Uh, actually, the question should be, how can you do it so fast? Uh, in the past, conferences have taken us up to three months to achieve. So the fact that we're able to do the conference in four weeks is actually a record. Uh, one that we've been able to do for the last few conferences, but if you go back a number of years, technology is what allows us to be able to do the conference in, in only four weeks. Um, the reason it takes that long is because there are very important decisions that have to be made in terms of, uh, it's a technical conference, so they have to look at all of the studies that have been done, the proposals that have been made on a large number of agenda items, and, and answer the very important question of can these new systems and services be brought into use, um, added to the already large number of systems and services um, operating without causing harmful interference into the existing services. Um, that's a critical element of the conference and, and that's the fundamental, fundamental reason why it takes a while. And who are these 3,000 or so delegates? They are um, representatives from uh, administrations. We have 193 member states of the ITU. We usually have more than 160 of those member states present uh, and able to participate in the decision-making process. Uh, those delegations, um, small countries oftentimes only have a few delegate, delegates, but large companies, countries um, often have delegations of more than 100 people and they're technical experts on all of those different services. And so that's how the, the, the delegation in, at large is so big and the, um, and the decisions are, are complicated, but they're, they're well debated and, and well negotiated. Now the World Radio Communication Conference uh, is held every four years or so. Is expected to play, a, 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 like you say, a critical role in contributing to the future growth and development of telecommunications and ICTs. I wanted to ask you, what are the key areas that will be addressed by this Radio Communication Conference? Well, the ch most challenging agenda item is one that people refer to as, as 5G. It's really looking at additional spectrum that can be made available for um, mobile broadband communications. And we're looking now at spectrum that is in the millimeter wave frequencies between uh, 24 and 86 gigahertz. So these are spec this is spectrum that's not currently available for those systems. Um, the currently available um, systems or spectrum is already in use and for 3G and 4G and will be considered and used um, by those same companies um, for 5G services. So this is actually looking at additional spectrum, not, not changing any of the, the current frequency allocations or frequency identification. And how, how quickly are those decisions implemented after the conference? Again, it depends on each member state. Some administrations um, have already started to position um, identifying spectrum that they will um, license for those services. Others are still in the process of rolling out their you know, 4G systems and, and are taking a longer term perspective. But it, that depends on member state by member state. Apart from uh, the spectrum that may be made available for 5G, what else is going to be discussed there? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we have um, a number of transport systems or services that will be um, considered. Intelligent transport systems, will spectrum be specifically available for that? Um, railway to track side communications. Uh, also, um, we have spectrum now used for Wi-Fi systems. They're looking at expanding that. Obviously, a lot of the data traffic is over Wi-Fi. It's not over um, over mobile systems. So, so looking at the amount of spectrum available for that is is going to be one of the key issues at the conference. Uh, people are looking at the potential new spectrum to be used by high altitude platform stations. It's been um, in the radio regulations for many years to allow these systems, but now we have new technology that can take advantage of it. Uh, so that's, those are some of the issues. Um, we also have issues related to um, s satellite systems. 
um, non-geostationary orbit um, systems, looking at the regulatory procedures for bringing them into use. Uh, we have issues related to um, small satellite and short duration missions. How do, how do we regulate them in such a way that the regulatory framework is, is consistent with the time frame for bringing those into market? Uh, so we have a variety of, of topics on the agenda of the conference. So what effect will the outcomes of the conference have on end users in the future? So the conference decisions will be manifest in changes to the radio regulations, which are then implemented at the national level by the governments. Um, as they become implemented, what people will see, whether they perceive it or not, is uh, further enhancements in their um, safety in terms of both travel by air and by sea, uh, as well as increasing the, um, the opportunities for um, broadband communication, either by high altitude platform stations or um, radio local area networks, which people refer to as Wi-Fi, or by enhanced um, mobile broadband communications, what people refer to as 5G, which the ITU refers to as international mobile telecommunications. Uh, we should be clear that the ITU does not um, identify spectrum for different generations of technology. So the frequencies that are available now for uh, third generation and have been involved to fourth generation, what people call 3G or 4G, are frequencies that will be available for 5G, in addition to additional spectrum that we are considering. All of that in the framework of international mobile telecommunications. And, and 5G is going to be particularly spectrum hungry, is that right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it's supposed to be significantly increasing the efficiency of the use of the spectrum. So you should have d higher data rates within the existing frequency bands when they deploy 5G in those networks. And then as, in addition, they're adding additional frequencies. People are talking about the use of these frequencies for interconnecting more things. Um, so what people refer to often as the Internet of Things. Uh, and I think we'll still have to see how the market e evolves. Um, this is to make sure that the market is able to evolve, that the spectrum is there, so that as you know, innovation occurs, people are able to make use of that, um, not to be inhibited by the lack of spectrum. So hopefully there'll be enough for everybody. Indeed, but at the same time, the, the other important issue is protecting existing um, services and, and systems so that we're not causing harmful interference into very vital systems that are used for, for instance, for weather forecasting and other, and other things that are also essential for, for human life and safety. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us in the studio. We wish you the very best uh, uh, for the, the whole of the, uh, the conference, which I'm sure will, for some will be an endurance uh, test. Uh, for others, I'm sure they're quite used to the pace. And, uh, uh, and we hopefully will catch up with you again uh, in the very near future in, in Chamoche. Thank you very much. Look forward to it. Thank you, Joanne.